Burris releases it and right. Some just throw it all up high and shit. The people in, in Regina are more concerned about winning, first of all. In the hands of an Argo defender, that's winners. Damn, Henry, you got him first down if you throw it to it. Baker again. You gotta be shitting me. Missed tackles, Omar, you gotta be shitting me. Second, be it entertaining. Because nobody wants to win more than Roy Schindler. Dickinson stands in. He'll take off. Yeah, come on, come on. Damn. So I won't be outside yelling and screaming and hollering and cussing. It's bad for my image. Come on, step to him. Shout a receiver. Get to know Roy Shivers, and you quickly realize he's not all about making a good impression. He's about doing the right thing and doing whatever it takes to bring the Grey Cup home to Saskatchewan. Hey, Henry, you throw through lanes. Throw through lanes sometimes. Through lanes. His style is hands-on. Wake your hands up, Scott. Hey, uh, Rocky. Yes, sir. You know what they mean by throwing through lanes? Through lanes? Yeah. Yeah, I just gotta get that outside on. Oh, you throw through lanes a lot of times. You don't have to throw over the top a lot of times. You throw through here. Okay. They give you passing lanes. That's what's called passing lanes. Right. He's up front and very personal. Yes, I want to get back to like 195. Mm -hmm. Whatever you was playing at last year, that was the weights and stay there and watch what you eat. Quit eating all that McDonald's and all that. You ain't got no girlfriend up here who can cook for you and stuff? Watch it. She can't cook? I know you got one, don't give me that night nice yet. Uh, I ain't got one, I ain't got one. Shivers took over as general manager of the team five years ago, but this season has been especially trying. The team got off to a slow start. Y'all run the ball, y'all run it. The Rough Riders are in the playoffs, but it's been 15 years since they've gone all the way. Sure, the challenge of turning the team around making them champions is why Roy Shivers came here. But when he was offered the job in 1999, Roy Shivers saw it as a chance to open doors. And all the decisions that have been made have been made by somebody else about us. So now, finally, in the year 2000, Roy Shivers is in a decision-making uh, position. So I go, okay, now I'm going to play it just like you played it. Okay. One, two, and M. <laughs> I'm going outside. I see you outside. Roy Shivers is the first black general manager in professional football anywhere. <laughs> good, very good. Hey, glad you guys are here. Thanks for your support and everything. We get the man behind the football club to do that. His name is Mr. Roy Shivers, the general manager of the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Please give him a welcome. And he wasted no time making his mark. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank you for your support. I would like to introduce our new uh, head football coach, Danny Barrett. I had a qualified coach, and he happened to be black. And I wanted him to be black. Why? Because we never get these chances. I'm in a position where I could finally do it. we would never been in a position where we could do it. What other black general managers in the NFL do you know? And if I don't do it, who's going to do it? Oh, that's why y'all be balling so hard in the game. Y'all actually doing some work this year. I like it. I like it. Shivers hired Danny Barrett, making him only the second block to ever coach in the CFL. He wanted someone, you know, African American of color that was qualified. And I think that's the key. You know, if I if I wasn't qualified, I don't think he would have hired myself. Yeah, DBs on three, one, two, three. DBs. DBs. Yeah, special team circuit, special team circuit. Let's go now. They are Get pioneers of sorts in a sports where black players dominate the field but not the front office. Roy Shivers and Danny Barrett are the first black GM coach duo in the CFL and, for that matter, in the NFL. Making history, you know, black GM, you got a black head coach. This is history in the making. What does that mean for you? Oh, man, that's tremendous because if you're thinking, how long has football been around? Long time. <laughs> football's been around a long time. And he's the first one. The first one.
So you're 63, huh? Yep. July 3rd, 1941. I think that adds up to 63. I'd like to say about 49, but it's 63. I'm getting ready to take off here again. My father taught me that, hey, don't, never forget where you came from. If you get your foot in the door, you help somebody. You help somebody else come along. And that's what I was striving to do. And where Roy Shivers came from has a lot to do with where he is today. Shivers was born into a segregated world, Halley, Arkansas. His mother, Adele, and his father, Willie, raised eight children. There were separate uh, bathrooms, separate uh, eating establishments, separate schools, uh, separate everything. You're not allowed to go where you want to go, sit where you want to go, eat where you want to go, uh, use the bathroom where you want to use the bathroom. Uh, that hurts, you know, that it makes you feel less than a human being. So they felt like less than a man. And uh, so therefore he didn't want his kids to be brought up in, the, in that environment. And that's why he took us to California. The family moved to West Oakland, an area known as the projects. We were segregated mostly by economic means, a community of a lot of people that knew each other from the South. It was a segregated community because the only people that lived in this housing uh, projects were blacks and uh, Chicanos at the time. In America, being black in the 50s meant there were few places to play sports for kids. In West Oakland, there was only one place, Defermery Park. The park is still special for Shivers, he returns often to hang out with his childhood buddies. Uh, this was probably, say, our Mecca. This was like Harlem to us, you know, the Renaissance thing. This was where we'd come to, to compete. Compete and be inspired. Now watch this throw here. Now watch this throw, right? Take to the left and throw to the right. This park was a second home to some of the most famous athletes and activists in modern U.S. history. There was Frank Robinson, first black manager in baseball history, Bill Russell, the first black coach in professional basketball. Early this morning, Los Angeles police moved on the local Black Panther headquarters to serve arrest and search warrants. Then there were the activists. The Black Panther Party was born at Defermery Park. Young blacks who took up arms during the height of the civil rights movement. Blacks who were seen as a symbol of defiance during the turbulent 60s. Among the founders, Huey Newton. Bobby Seale, David Hilliard, and Shivers knew them all. And Roy was always an outspoken man, be it a general manager who will, you know, take control of the situation and, uh, and, and not bow and, and, uh, and who will go outside the box. All right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's hey, that way, joint. Hey, what's up? <laughs> Hilliard has never left this doing? area of Oakland. Well, Roy it was, uh, you know, a part of our, our upbringing, and socially we, you know, we, we were all together. How did it make you feel, uh, David Hilliard, when, when Roy Shivers hired a black to coach his football team to make a statement? How do you feel about that? I, I feel that that's so much in the spirit of what our Black Panther Party stood for. Well, you, you made a statement, and you did it with good spirit and uh, in, in good style, and we're, we're proud of that. I'm I happy, yeah, 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 sure. yeah. I think I'd have been remiss if I did. <laughs> you know what I mean? Fat A's, Fat A's, get over here left tackle, boy. You can't hey. run the ball no more. You wouldn't know the historical significance of Defermery. There are no signs, no plaques, nothing to indicate the field of dreams this place once was for young blacks. For Shivers, his dream here was to be quarterback, something unheard of for blacks in the 1950s. You ready? Hike the ball! There you go, there you go. Shivers was never given a chance to be quarterback in high school. He lost out to a white schoolmate. Well, at the time, it made me feel uh, real, it made me angry, first of all. It made me realize a lot of things that were going on when they put you at a certain position. It was one of those things where, hey, well, you're not good enough to play, smart enough to play quarterback, so we'll put you at running back or a receiver, or a DB or something like that. Instead of throwing the ball, he ran with it. Shivers became a running back at Utah State, a star who once led the nation in scoring. Shivers had a knack for finding the end zone. But even star football players faced discrimination. It was hard times. That was the spirit of the time, it was hard times. MacArthur Lane played with Shivers. He remembers a game against an all-white team in Memphis. It was 1965. The things that we heard coming into the stadium, you know, like 
black sambos, go home. They were pouring popcorn and stuff on us and stuff like that. So, you know, what it did, it kind of set a tone. It set a tone of anger to the point where on defense, it was all about kill. And that's the way it was. And that's the way I played it. They were calling us the N-word. Uh, they were spitting on us and everything, you know. And, you know, our thing was uh, we'd look up coming out of this tunnel. We'd look up and give them the finger. Made me ang angry. Put a bad taste in my mouth. It's still in there. On campus, there was a lot of anger, too, because Roy Shivers, one of a handful of black students, was dating Carol Brown, a small town girl from Roosevelt, Utah. I was 18 years old before I ever saw a black person. A chance to really ask you, how was the uh, fan appreciation day today? It went over real good. Carol remembers the first time she met Roy. He was, he was a nice dresser. <laughs> He was a great jock, and he was funny. But many whites on campus found nothing funny about Carol and Roy dating. What was the talk on the campus, do you think? Carol's dating a... People were whispering behind my back, and guys not talking to me anymore. People who I've known for three years didn't talk to me anymore, you know. The I was the little sister of Minerva, you know, you're, it's a fraternity and they pick girls for their little clubs, you know, and I was kicked out of the little sister of Minerva, whoop-de-doo, who gives a damn, you know, the essays. <laughs> oh, Carol's going out with Roy Shivers, that black guy, you know, she can't be in our club anymore. But Roy wasn't kicked out of school. I had an altercation with one of my own black teammates, got in a big fight. It was the only fight I probably had with somebody was one of my black teammates because he said he felt that he told me one day, hey, since you're dating the white girl now, you don't hang out with us anymore. And we got into a big uh, altercation, you know, and I whipped his ass real good and I never had a problem out of him or <laughs> anybody else after that. Big fullback, yeah. Despite objections on all fronts, Roy and Carol eloped in 1966. They got married in Las Vegas. Meanwhile, Shivers continued with football. He signed for big money with the St. Louis Cardinals of the NFL. And there he saw yet another world divided along color lines. Well, you know, you had people taking sides in the locker room. You know, it was like, it was a racially divided locker room. MacArthur Lane also played with Shivers in St. Louis. Well, you had certain uh, groups of guys that just hung together all the time. They were all Southern boys. And that was the click. You know, and those guys kind of ran the team. You know, a lot of people had, uh, there were KKK signs around, you know. In, in the, the dressing room. In the dressing room, and some of the guys had the, uh, the swatch sticker thing, you know what I mean? Teammates. Yeah. Well, you know, the whites were there, and the blacks were there, and the, the whites didn't kind of like what the blacks were doing, and the blacks never spoke up sometimes, you know what I mean? Shiver stayed seven years in St. Louis. St. Louis was an awful place. I was so ill at ease there and people stared at us and I didn't, I didn't know that it was St. Louis is below the Mason-Dixon line. It was against the law to be interracially married. Mr. Bidwell, the owner of the Cardinals, sent someone to Utah to tell Roy not to marry me. They did not want him marrying a white woman. In 1972, Roy Shivers retired from the NFL, coached some college ball, but chances to coach in the NFL were few and far between. So when he got the call from the BC Lions in 1983 for a job as an assistant coach, he jumped at it. After all, Canada was a place, it seems, where black coaches were welcome on the sidelines. Congratulations, Calgary! Let's go in! Shivers has had successful years in Canada. He's won Grey Cups in BC and Calgary. Calgary, with a last second field goal from Mark McLaughlin, will sip the bubbly tonight. A big part of that success was his knack for recruiting great players. It's just an amazing list of not just good players, but outstanding players. Al Mackey is a sports columnist and former CFL beat reporter. Over the middle, Alan Pitts is all open. He's got a touchdown, his second of the ball game. Players who went on and had long careers and racked up big numbers. Um, and these were guys who were all either too slow, a little too small, 
Didn't quite fit the dynamics. How are they going to work? For the end zone, Moore, touchdown! And Roy knew right away is that that guy is good. So I think here he established a pipeline of players. Roy Shivers' reputation got the attention of the Rough Riders, an organization in desperate need of an extreme makeover. I'm very excited and very pleased to announce that Roy Shivers will be the next general manager. Well, it was kind of scary at the time because they were been down so long. The Rough Riders, one of the oldest teams in Canada, a club that by the late 90s appeared to be at the end of its rope. Deep in debt, losing seasons, fans were staying away. So the club sought salvation from Shivers. Regina's a tough place, Saskatchewan's a tough place. And, uh, you know, I'm looking at the roster and I'm like, holy cow, this takes for a revamp, a whole revamp. I accepted the challenge, I wanted the challenge to see if I could do it. So, hey, it was a no-brainer as far as I was concerned, even though it was in Regina and stuff, you know. I would like to go 18 and 0, but I know that's not possible. But we're going to be a competitive, good football team. First of all, let me say I'm happy to be here. And I phoned him and said, Roy, um, I'd like to schedule and bring you into Saskatchewan and sit down with our selection committee. So we set up a time and a day. And I said, How am I going to recognize you? Because I'd never met him. Didn't know who he was. He just, he just laughed. He says, I'll be the only black guy in the plane. So um, I didn't. I didn't know he was black. Yeah. I had no, yeah. so I, the, the standing joke between him and I is I didn't know Roy Shivers was black. <laughs> <laughs> and there was another thing the organization did know about Roy Shivers. Now that he was calling the shots, he was going to shake things up. When I came in this league in 83, myself and Gene Gaines were the only two black assistant coaches in this league. The only two in the league. Moon is so strong when he's running to the left side as a quarterback. First and but on the field, the CFL was a refuge for African Americans. Moon ducks away from the initial charge. Especially for quarterbacks who had to come north to play. Oh, that rush is on Ely by Wayne Shaw. The Canadian Football League, uh, they think that it's been utopia up here for blacks. Chuck Ailey, probably the, well, I think he's the greatest rookie ever to play in this Because season. they let the black quarterbacks play. Okay, so they thought everything was hunky door, but you open a the door there, but you shut out the other door. What do you mean yeah. shut out the other door? The, other, the coaching profession. You know, it's okay. Well, we've got, we've done our part with the black quarterbacks and stuff. Never thought about the black coaches and stuff. Never. Because he missed his check. You get a little bit. Shivers feels comfortable with an African-American as his coach. He and Barrett understand each other. I was like, hey, this is that. So, hey, what's a bad? He didn't look gonna be funny. What's he found that he could be like, hey, he got all he could be saying. What's a bad? When they take the tag. I think there was a feeling that, oh, well, Danny was hired because he's black. And, and I, I don't think that was I'm saying anything out of turn here because I think there were a lot of those who wondered, you know, why. I guess Roy's feeling was, you know, I can argue this on a whole bunch of levels, but the point is, I think I can win with this guy. Well, what are people afraid of when they see a black a person applying for a football job? That's a very good question. You tell me. Or, or, or let the guy that's, that owns this team tell me why. He didn't give this guy the job. It's because you can go in and project yourself better verbally or something than this guy, but this guy is a better X and O and, uh, guy than you or whatever. What, what is it? What is it? What's the criteria? Is it written in... Uh, in, in in a uh, form where if he doesn't do this or say that, he's not qualified for the job. You know, that's the same thing we're trying to find out. You know, it, uh, and I hate that old thing about, hey, you don't have enough experience. How the hell do you get experience? People have to give you the experience. They have to give you the job. And like I said, I'm not making this a sports thing. This is everyday life, Carson. This is every, in every business. People of color were not treated fairly. You know, it's been well documented. And so anytime you try to get on an even playing field with, with the other race, you know, there's going to be some questions, you know. And it's not fair, but life isn't. Game time. And a better feeling in the world in game day at Taylor Field. Here we go. For Barrett, this game has special significance. The Toronto Argonauts are in town. And now, Weiser's the coach for the Argos, another black, Mike Clemens. Even in the year 2004, this is a rare scene. 
two teams, two black head coaches. We often talk, you know, about history, you know, as far as himself being in, in Toronto and, and me being here in Saskatchewan. Step there, go. <laughs> Uh, Toronto represent the East, Saskatchewan represent the West of the Great Cup because then you have history as one of the f only first African-American head coach to win a Great Cup in the CFL. And that's what one of us wants. Man, how you doing, man? How you feeling? Yeah. Blessed. Yeah, blessed. Yeah, everybody's doing great. Yes, yeah. So when I grew up, I wanted to be like you. <laughs> a lot of blacks in this league look up to Roy Shivers. He's a shining example of what's possible. He's given hope to those who want to stay in football after their playing days are over. And it relates to any minority group. You know, give them a chance. <laughs> give them a chance. You know, my thing was I was in a position to do this. We've never, do you understand what I'm saying? We're in a position making, a decision making position. That's what it was. You know, decisions have always been made by somebody else on us throughout history, not only in sports or football, throughout history, you know. Birthday to you. Happy Shivers birthday likes it in Saskatchewan. He signed a new three year contract, Happy keeping him here until 2007. I think Roy Shivers deserves run for premium. I mean, I, I, I think he is one of the, he's a, he's a Pied Piper. He's a, he's a person that people can, can look, look to. He's a, he's a very honest man. Shivers feels he's made his point. His people are in place, but he knows that in pro sports, that doesn't mean much if you don't win. I want to be a winner. And I, was, I want to be a guy to try to do what was right. I think he feels there's a moral obligation to, to try and to implement change in a country that's has shown it's, it can be open-minded. So, you know, it's, it's that other agenda. Uh, it, it won't play if the team isn't winning. The happiest thing for me about uh, Canada right now would be for the Riders to win the Grey Cup in the year 2004, 2005. I'd be the most happiest man. I, I'd forget about everything else. I'd retire right off into the sunset. But Grey Cup or not, when Roy Shivers leaves, the Canadian Football League may never see the likes of him again. But my legs would read, well, he, you know, I like this Frank Sinatra thing. He did it his way. He did it his way, you know, and I'm, I'm in that, that, that uh, sphere right now where, hey, I tried to do it like it was supposed to be done. And it's about winning and treating people fairly. And that's what I want to be. Hey, he tried to win, he tried to treat people fairly. For The National, I'm Costa Maragas in Regina. See you. <laughs>